Okay, it's the beginning of the third semester of gunsmithing school. Just want to show some projects. Uh, this semester I'm taking firearms repair, stock making, machine shop three, and CNC. And these are two of the projects I'll be showing uh, from repair and stock making. First one is for repair. Um, we're required to do three cleaning oils, one for a pistol, one for a shotgun, and one for a rifle. And this is obviously my pistol. This is a Ruger Mark II. Um, and by the way, this stuff is great. I just while I'm doing this video, it's just carpet matting. But the reason it's on my table is one, it protects the gun because it's it's kind of got it's cushy. Um, so it protects the gun when I'm putting putting it down. And also, it's great for these little tiny parts because as you're taking the gun apart, you have, see all these little parts. Sometimes they, something like this will spring out, fall on the table, and beauty of this thing is it's got all these little holes so it doesn't roll very far it actually kind of falls into one of these holes so it's great when I'm so I, I find this stuff really good um, you know you can get a you can get a bench mat from a number of gun companies but this stuff you can just get at um, your local store at it's carpet matting you can get just a huge sheet of it for it's 10 bucks you know roughly I think this was 12 but they have cheaper ones for you know smaller rolls but it's you know you get a lot of it because it's meant for carpeting um, but anyway, this is the Ruger Mark II. I've been taking it, taking it down, and again working on this mat. Um, these are this is the magazine. There's a little latching in the back. Didn't pull these out because, as you can see, they've got I don't know if you can see that they've got rivets in them, or they've they've been kind of pounded down and and really kind of semi permanently in there. So do the best I can cleaning those out. But anything that's not staked in or riveted in, uh, pulled apart for the cleaning oil. These are all the different parts. Put that over here. Um, this is the bolt group. Um, take off the extractor. It's a spring for the extractor. And where is the extractor? Here's the extractor. See, so that's good. It was good to get in there because there was a lot of like grime, especially with these 22s. Just I bought this used at a pawn shop, and um, whoever shot this before shot it a ton, as most people do, because 22s are fun and they're not very expensive to shoot. And I don't think anyone's ever done this before because I found like little leaves and like spider webs and things in there. Just little bits of it, but it was just funny. Um, and of course, lead fouling like you would not believe. I was just scraping it out. Uh, this is the hammer. Here's the safety right here. The plunger for the safety. Um, slide release, latch. Um, here's the ham. Uh, here's the uh, trigger group. It's a trigger. Um, this is the. Um, this is the thing that part that pushes up um, when uh, when the uh, magazine is empty. So the slide will lock back. That's what, that's what does that. And uh, this is the heel catch. And here's just you know part of the bolt, just all the internal workings of this. Here's the frame. Uh, the only thing I didn't take out for this purpose is for this purpose because I already took this apart already for grade and put it and cleaned it and oiled it. But I I forgot to shoot a video of it and you know wanted something to shoot and I thought this would be kind of interesting. The only thing I didn't take out was the sear. And that's one reason is I don't know if I really should have even taken it out in the first first time because it's kind of riveted in. It wasn't a big deal. I pounded that back back in, but I don't think it, it's meant to be taken out in and out all the time. Also, you can clean around it, but since I don't think anyone's ever done this before, it wasn't a big deal. I cleaned, you know, every everything that I could. You run it through the parts washer, uh, cleaned it out through an air hose, and you know, you really get in there. You know, each each individual little part you wash with brushes underneath the parts washer, which is um, the one we use for this. is It's some kind of organic soap, but it's supposed to take all that out. And uh, there's all, there's two philosophies in our school. One's the organic stuff and water-based, and there's the chemical-based stuff that's, um, you know, it's both got their pros and cons. But as you can see, um, when a competent gunsmith charges $50 to $100 for a cleaning oil, this is why. So they take it down to... Um, they take it apart as much as they can and really scrub it. There really is, and you know, they, <laughs> it was no joke when they were, when they were checking that, he took a little, they struck a little pick and like cleaned around, make sure I didn't leave any lead in there. Um, you know, look, look down the bore, of course, make sure that's clean. And, and there was a little tiny lead like stripe in there. And so I had to, he, he caught me on that the first time I took it up. He said, no, 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 take it back. You have to clean that out. So it's, it's, uh. You know the standards are high if if uh, if it's a competent gunsmith and they're held to the same standards that they do at the school. Um, but I'll be putting that back together after the video, and since I've done it once already, it's shouldn't take that long. 
Uh, the second thing that I'm doing, uh, and I'm going to show in this video, is for stock making class. This is the stock blank that I selected that I bought. It's made of, uh, it's a graft, which I guess what it is is that when the tree is very young, they, they'll take two trees and kind of stick them together, you know, and uh, bandage them together, and they'll end up starting to grow together. So as you can see, let's shine the light over there. Um, it's actually two types of grains of wood. Over here, you got Bastogne, and on this side, you got English Walnut. So I thought, you know, that might be an interesting thing. Let's see how that rifle turns out. And I thought I'd do something. I thought that might be interesting for my first rifle. And we'll be cutting these this out, just a blank. Um, and it's obviously been dried. So, and these are the. I just put them up on my wall because we already cut them out. So, actually, what you do is you cut this pattern out. Um, the one, the one I'm about to show you. You run it on a photocopy machine. You tape it together to the pattern, and you kind of place it on the gun. And the reason you place it on the gun is you want to kind of see, you know, how, line up the uh, grains of how you want it to look out, uh, look when you, when you, when the rifle is completed. And up here, I'm gonna have to lift this up because my tripod doesn't go this high are the three rifle sketches that I did, um, stock sketches. And you start with a um, template of a uh, rifle action, which is the Mauser that we're all using. And um, then you draw different things. You draw the uh, stock onto it. And the reason you do this is the, we're practicing on how to make, practicing how to make custom rifles. So if you had a customer, um, you would measure them. Mine is 13th and 7th 8th inch length of pull which is measured off the front of the trigger and about a four inch uh, grip pull. I've got a 20 inch barrel and an eight inch uh, forearm and, and I did that by using 0.415 as the, uh, the ratio of uh, and you know you basically the way it works is you have the action and you have the bore line, which is up here. This is the bore line. And you make measurements off of that. And so it's, it's basically a pattern, but you may, it's made to measure rifle. So that's what we're making. We're making rifles for ourselves. And so I'm very excited to show that. I, I wanted to show this video because in the next class, I will actually start cutting on the blank. And so it'll kind of start taking shape. But anyway, this is, this is uh, so far what we've been doing in third semester. I also have projects from Machine and CNC that I'll be making videos on later. I have some cool projects in those classes as well. But anyway, I uh, hope you found this stuff interesting, and I'll, I'll try to make videos. It's been busy for the first two weeks, so I've just been trying to keep ahead of the classes. So these are also some, also some chisels that I'm making for stock making. Um, and basically, they're just bigger versions of chisels I made last semester. And you know, everyone was, these are first semester projects. And second semester, you can either buy these or make them, but... These were two. These were screwdrivers I bought for a dollar each at the hardware store, or I can buy chisels at the at the store for, or excuse me, scrapers at the store for twenty five dollars each. So I decided to do a little work on these. Uh, the chisels I bought, so um, just decided to make some of them because I didn't have time to make all my tools uh, for the semester. But anyway, uh, if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them in future videos. But um, I'll try to make video um, frequently throughout the semester. All right, thanks.